America. You don't have to be crazy to live here, but it helps. Good morning, I'm Cam Reporter, owner of Robin Hood Studios, and this is Venture Utah. We have a couple of great guests this morning. Joining us will be Bowen Gines with Authority Roofing and Michelle Molay with Assisted Living Locators. Before we get, bring them on, some short comments on everything going on right now. So, my first exhortation to everyone watching is this. Don't stop talking to people and don't stop listening to people, especially those with whom you disagree. The only course of action when we stop talking and listening is violence. So don't stop talking and listening. My second exhortation is to be active in the political process. As much as things are happening on social media, elections and the political process is where the rubber meets the road. Being loud on social media and then not reaching out to your representatives is just not effective. My third exhortation is to stop vilifying the other side and don't dismiss arguments without giving them proper consideration. You can condemn specific actions without condemning an entire movement or belief system. Just because you dislike someone or are suspicious of their motives does not mean their argument is invalid. It's easy to avoid engaging with an argument by dismissing the person making the argument. But that does not take you closer to truth. In fact, it does the opposite. It deprives you an opportunity to learn more and become more sophisticated in your own perspective. So if, for example, you refused to watch the video put out by Candace Owens on the George Floyd incident and racism in America in general, just because you don't like or trust Candace Owens, you should rethink that. Likewise, if you avoided watching the animated video explaining systemic racism that went around because you don't believe systemic racism is real, you should rethink that. All right, that's it for my soapbox for today. Let's get on to our guests. Our first guest today is Michelle Malay from Assisted Living Locators. Michelle, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's going to be great to, to have you on and talk about this. This is something that uh, has actually come to the forefront with current events with, with COVID-19, and there's a lot of concerns around that. So tell us a little bit about what Assisted Living Locators is. So Assisted Living Locators is actually, um, we are a small business here up in northern Salt Lake, Utah, okay, mm -hmm. so north of Salt Lake. And okay. what we do is we help people find the appropriate level of care uh, when they're taking care of their elderly loved ones mm. and it's becoming overwhelming. So we can actually form a plan for them, um, whether they wanna stay at home or they're looking to um, to place somebody in a, in a assisted living community or memory care. Okay, that's fantastic. So you're I, I, not necessarily a matchmaker, you're more of a consultant. Correct. Okay, yep. and you mm -hmm. help them figure out what's going to be the best solution. Exactly right, and um, we have numerous resources, um, and I all, I'm always discovering new ones, and there are so many resources available to people, and they actually have no idea. So it's really important to actually give us a call, and the reason I say that is because um, most people, especially when they're um, taking care of a spouse, um, they don't have the opportunity to do researching on the computer. And the, mm. when they're caretaking, it's so overwhelming, they don't have the opportunity to actually find the time. So they can make one phone call or they can make 20 to 50 phone calls. So we're here to just, just answer that one phone call and do all the footwork for them. And we don't charge them for it. Really? Yeah. Okay, so it's a complimentary service that just helps them make a connection with the resources they need. We are charged. Um, we we do get. I'm sorry, we're not char We're not charging them, but we are compensated by a, an assisted living community. So if they ever mm. get to the point where they need to actually be placed, that's when we get compens compensated by the community itself, not the not the families. Gotcha. So, but we are here to make their their um, end of life choices, um, uh, their own choices. If we go in and we see a situation where things just aren't safe anymore, we'll try to really encourage and nudge them to be placed for their own safety, um, but, but we do want to honor their wishes. If they want to stay at home, we'll, arrange that. we'll try to arrange that. That's phenomenal. That's great. So 
you mentioned resources that are available uh, to people that they're just not aware of. Mm -hmm. Can, would you mind sharing what some of those resources are? So um, a lot of times people think that they can't afford it. Um, and, mm. and if they can't afford it, believe it or not, they may not be able to afford it. But um, here's an example of what happened recently. Uh, one of my clients who I've been working with for months, um, I, I realized at one point she was asking me questions about, I, I have all these bills coming out of my checking account and I don't know what they're for. So I actually offered to help her because she has absolutely zero family. Mm. Um, she's the only one left and she has, um, she's all alone. Um, so I was looking through some of her bills for her and discovered that she has an insurance policy um, that is just about to expire. She's been paying for almost 20 years on. Nobody is there to uh, benefit from that policy, right? Mm. So uh, I'm, I'm able to, to take that policy and, and turn it into um, some money that will help her along the oh, way. Okay. She's not quite ready for assisted living, but sure. she sure could use the extra money. And, and why is she paying on a policy that's not going to benefit her? Um, there's also Medicaid benefits. People think of Medicaid as welfare, um, and they don't, they're just, they shy away from it, and they think that, that the Medicaid uh, or the state is gonna come after them. Well, it's not necessarily true. There's a lot of ways to protect your assets um, and also tap into those Medicaid benefits to help the family mm. um, with the relief of the cost of assisted living. So what are the different options as far as uh, assisted living? I mean, there's everything from uh, full, full care to, to at home to a few hours a day. How do you, what are the categories there? Well, it, it progresses. So it starts out by, um, you know, helping somebody um, as far as, uh, um, you know, I'll, I'll just use my own family as an example. Um, my mother has dementia, and slowly but surely, she was, you know, she was able to care for herself. And then, you know, slowly but surely, her needs got increasingly um, progressive. And what I mean by that is that she, you know, um, she wasn't able to fix her own meals. Um, she was able to feed herself, but she wasn't able to actually fix her own meals. There's, there's, um, there are uh, companies that they're called home care companies. They have nothing to do with your health, but they'll come in and help you do your daily activities of living. Mm. Um, so they'll help you. They'll help you with um, preparing meals for you. They'll help you with uh, 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 clothing yourself. They'll help you um, with bathing needs, um, and so on and so forth. So. Um, there's also there's also companies that will come in and build ramps for people that are in wheelchairs. Mm. Um, they'll make your house handicap ready. Um, in other words, they'll install shower um, bars for you for safety oh, okay. purposes. There's so many things that are available that people don't know about. There's the the county Davis County in particular. Um, actually, this is all statewide, but you can go to the county and there's medical transportation. So somebody will come and pick you up, take you to the doctor, and then take you from the doctor back home. So, huh. and that's free. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, I would, so you'd probably describe that as maybe not the entry level, but that's maybe how it starts or exactly that's the lowest right. level of, of assistance. What's the next step up? So the next step is, uh, um, so there's different, there's different steps. And when the caretaker, caretakers are very overwhelmed, which happens, okay, and for, I'll go back to my own family because I can talk about them freely. Um, my, my father um, was really taking care of my mom and he was doing a phenomenal job. But as my mother's needs progressed, my father became very irritated because there were so many things that happened. Incontinence is one of them. Um, having to um, constantly walk my mom around the house. Um, there was a lot of denial that happened. Uh, my mom could have used a walker, but she didn't really want, she, you know, it was really hard, it's hard, you know, it's hard to age gracefully. Nobody likes to age, but we all have to do it. It's just the way it is. Um, and uh, when you have to start using a walker in public, it becomes embarrassing, I think. Our pride gets in our way. Instead of 
embracing aging and using a walker for safety purposes, unfortunately, I saw my mom fall several times, and it's a very scary feeling. Mm -hmm. So really what happens is um, you can bring people in and you can have them help you out to give that caretaker some time to kind of get them together and, and get the things their personal needs taken care of. I watched my dad get very irritable and I watched him become weaker. And, uh, and he had no idea that this was happening because this is an ongoing thing that's just happening. It's natural. Um, my mom's needs started to increase and eventually she, it's the old adage, she fell and she couldn't get up and my father couldn't pick her up this time. She ended up in a nursing home. So with that being said, she ended up, her health declined and my, you know, they never, my father and my mother never wanted her to go to a home um, or a community. And it's amazing when uh, that actually did happen. The difference in my father's uh, demeanor was, he was actually so much happier, mm. sad, but less irritated. So there's a lot to be said for, for that help. There's also things called respite care. People aren't aware of that. Um, respite care is giving that caretaker a break. They can actually, there's what they call adult daycare. Um, so there is one locally here in Davis County, there's one in Ogden, there's one in Salt Lake. So somebody can, can take their, their elderly loved one to that, that facility and um, have a day of rest, mm. do errands that it would take, you know, lots of work to do, or maybe their loved one can't be left at home without them being safe. Maybe that they would try to cook and leave a burner on, or they're mm. a wanderer, because in dementia, I'm actually certif uh, certified in dementia care, and that is a risk. So people act, don't know where they are, they're looking for their loved one when their loved one's gone, and they want they wander out of the house and they get lost. So mm -hmm. there's a lot to be said wow. for respite care. Okay, so respite care is maybe kind of an intermediary step. Yes, yes, so. it's not. Um, so it's not real prevalent here in Utah. I really would love to get more of that word out because it's such a help for caretakers. Gotcha. So. Real quick, we're, we've got to wrap up the segment, but I want to give a chance to hear exactly so. You did it at the very beginning, but let's get some more information on what you do for your customers. So what we do is we, my, I work with my daughter-in-law. My daughter-in-law is a registered nurse and she put herself through school working in assisted living okay. facilities. So um, basically what, what we do is we go out and we talk with the, the family. Um, most of the time families are not really ready for, for their loved one to go into a facility. Mm. And we help them, especially the person who needs to go. Um, so we help them talk to their family and introduce the subject, sort of create a plan if and when it happens. Doesn't mean that that person is definitely going into an assisted living facility. Gotcha. We talk to them about the benefits of it. Mm. And also it's so much different than it used to be. People have that idea of a nursing home a uh, nursing home is more when somebody is non-ambulatory. They're not able to move um, and they're really, their health is really failing. Mm. An assisted living can be so much fun. There's so many activities to do. There's great food there. There's, it, they can make friends. There's parties, there's shopping, there's movies, there's dancing, there's activities galore. It is such a great, move for people and they don't really know nine times out of ten people will say I wish I would have done this sooner mm. and couples can move together too that's awesome so if people want to get uh, in touch with you what is the best way to do so um, the best way would be my phone number which is 801-656-2141 and I answer my phone all the time because we never know when a crisis is hitting Mm. We can help people being discharged out of the hospital, um, help them move right into a, a, a community. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here, Thank Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. This was a great conversation. Thanks. All right. So our next guest is Bowen Gines with Authority Roofing. But while we wait for him to get ready, 
I have a message for you, our loyal viewers. If you want to be a guest on Venture Utah, get your 15 minutes of fame here on the show. You can do so by going to VentureUtah.com and clicking on Become a Guest. Guess what? It is completely free to do so. Venture Utah is a free service that we provide to the small business community here in Utah because our mission is to connect and strengthen the small business community in Utah. So if you want to be a guest, go ahead and fill out that form, reach out to us, and we will reach back out to you when we have a segment that fits your business. All right. With no further ado, we have the man himself, Bowen Gines with Authority Roofing. Bowen, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Cameron. So this is really fortuitous timing, actually, because, well, <laughs> I mean, there's a cloud but the silver <clears throat> lining, right? right. So uh, just recently over the week, this past weekend, we've had some inclement weather. Yeah. So uh, what does weather do to a roof? Oh, yeah, crazy. It can take years off of your roof. And I think, I think lots of times people don't see the damage. Maybe you see shingles missing. Um, a recent hell storm came through Willard. Like, that's been... That's been crazy, but but people don't realize the damage that's happened. So imagine you have a roof that's supposed to be 30 years. You have a storm like this come through, takes off five to 10 years of the gravel life of your roof. So now mm. the sun comes out, eats your roof up faster. And a lot of that damage, you could get it repaired at the cost of you having your insurance cover it. And you didn't even know, you know, if you, if you don't go through the right steps, then you, a few years down the road, you're going to be paying for your roof and insurance isn't going to cover it. So I guess that was, I kind of felt the urgence of letting people know, right? Like, mm. like your roof, if it's almost gone, maybe it has five years of life left on it. Like what an opportunity, right? If, if insurance will cover it mm. to save you 10, 15, 20 grand, you know, that oh, you're yeah. going to have to come up with. Oh so, yeah, it's crazy the uh, yeah. how expensive it can be to put on a roof if you don't have the insurance there. Yeah. So uh, just this past weekend, so after the mm. storms had gone through, we went down to my parents' house for a, a birthday party, and as we were driving up, we saw that his a couple of his shingles were actually standing up. They'd gotten caught or they'd torn out of the nails and kind of yeah. stood up underneath the, the layer above them. Yeah. So they're kind of like pinned right there. So we mentioned it to him, we got out a ladder, went up, take, took a look. And I remember, because we actually did a video with you about wind damage. Yeah. And so while I was up there, I, you know, I fixed the shingle and got that up, but then I just started lifting. And yeah. sure enough, it wasn't just that patch of you know, two to three shingles, mm -hmm. it was five shingles over and probably four or five levels up that you could just lift up the shingles and they're not attached to the roof anymore. Yeah. Exactly. And so I immediately gave him numbers of yourself and <laughs> a couple other roofers that I know that can do good work for him. He lives, he's down in Harriman, so he's pretty yeah. far away. Yeah. So I wanted to give him a few options, but it's, it's nuts how, so he mentioned that the roof had been replaced last time in 2001. And so it's getting up there if it was yeah. a 25 or a 30 year roof, right. it's getting pretty close. And so it makes sense that there'd be some damage there. Yeah. Is that what you see pretty frequently? Yeah, so, well, it's, people will see wind damage and they've seen a few shingles that are missing. Mm. What happens is the wind, when the wind passes, it also creates almost a suction on the back side of the roof. So there's uplift that happens. Mm. And so when, even though, yeah, you got a few shingles that are missing and on three tab roofs, you might see some shingles are missing, but they've all, like during the windstorm, they're all up and flapping like this. They've all been disconnected. The, the, it's blowing debris and stuff in your tar. Mm. The tar seals those back down, and now they all come back down. So you come outside and you go, oh, I don't have any damage. <laughs> My roof looks fine. You know, the neighbor's roof looks bad, you know. But what's happened is those have all come loose. You know, the debris's gotten under the tar. They won't stick again. So now every storm you lose a few. Every storm, you go, oh, now I get a few more and a few more. Mm. That initial storm, even with uplift, like you're saying on your dad's, will pull the nails out. It'll pull them off the nails that are on the roof, but it'll lay back down. So you think, well, I don't have any damage, and you know, yeah, your you roof, <laughs> yeah, and you and you will for a long time. Every storm, you get a few shingles missing. So let's talk about the process then. So, um, and using my dad as an example. So while we were up there, he wanted us to make sure that the roof wasn't going anywhere, and right. so he actually had me. You know, we took pictures the best we could, and then we just got some roofing nails and just hammered it down through the top of the shingle just to keep things in place. Yeah, is that a bad idea? It, so in some instances, yes. So okay. imagine you go out, you grab some shingles and you go and put them on your roof to replace those spots. When you call your insurance or if someone calls insurance and you say, hey, look, we, 
we had some wind damage, and they say, hey, you've got a $1,000 deductible. It ranges, you know, $250, 500 $1,000. Some companies are doing a percentage of the roof now. It sounds like a lot, mm -hmm. but if you as a homeowner don't notice the other damage, then you're gonna, every storm, you're gonna be up there patching, right? right. And if you put in temporary shingles, so you just, oh, what color, I don't care. You put it in and then we have another storm and that color's different. Insurance considers that patch a permanent fix and so it won't count it towards the damage. Ah. And then they also, now you have different colors on your roof so you must be okay with different colors so we don't have to pay to make your whole roof match. Oh boy. We can just pay to patch the rest of it too. Well, we didn't so, add any shingles. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, which is frustrating, right? When you're just trying to do it yourself to save money, you're saving the insurance. You know, they don't have to come out and pay for it, but really, like, take the time to have a professional come look at it, and make sure they're getting all the damage. Because even adjusters who are trained in roofing will go up and they'll count the missing shingles and be like, oh, it's not quite there yet. You should have had, right? They didn't notice all the other stuff because they aren't a professional. Mm. So, and then if you go to them with professional quotes from roofers saying, hey, yeah, he has damage. Yeah, we think the whole roof should be replaced. Then you're, the chances are you'll get it replaced. Okay, so a good process. The process essentially is if you notice the damage on your roof, or maybe even if you don't notice it, you just think there might be damage, Yeah. call right. a roofer. Yeah, why not? A call they do a roofer. free estimates. Okay, so yeah. most roofers will come out and do a free yep. estimate and, and check out the roof and see if, it's, if there's something there. Yeah. And then at that point, is it still, would you then call the insurance company? Does the roofer call the insurance company? Yeah, so I, I'd have the roofer take pictures and give you, even if it's just the pictures and not an estimate at first. So roofing, so insurance has their pricing. They know what the roof should cost. So even if, an, if someone comes out and quotes your roof and they're way high, they're gonna make sure it's right. Like they're gonna have an adjuster and they're gonna do the rates that are going in that area. And they're gonna work back and forth with the roofer to make it a fair price. And so, so you aren't gonna be treated poorly. If the more, you know, the more you have it looked at and the more professionals you have involved, the greater chance hmm. that you're gonna be treated correctly, right? Nice. Checks treated. and balances. Right, yeah. yeah. And, and another interesting to, thing too is that people when they, when the, they're afraid that their rates are gonna go up, right? So when a storm comes through on insurance, uh, your rates go up when you're negligent, right? You, if your vehicle, you've run into someone, if you're, well, whatever you're doing, if you, let, if you don't take care of the roof and the shingles go bad and it starts leaking, that's negligence on your part. Mm. You weren't taking care of the thing you should have. Mm. When a storm comes through, it doesn't go on your rates, even though you make a claim because it's in, they call it an act of God, right? It's something that's out of your hands. Mm. So if a hell storm comes through like it did in Willard and you're going, well, maybe I have some damage, maybe I don't, you know? And I know they do in Willard, I know they have damage because I went and looked at a few roofs and it's crazy, but people are like, but they don't know what to do. They don't know the process. And so if you, if you, you know, make sure, just make sure, take the time Take the time, yeah. put in the effort. Yeah. Right, yeah, and that won't go on your rates. It's not gonna, you're not gonna, oh man, like it's gonna hurt my rates, right? That's like, really good to know. Because it's a storm incident, and it's out of sure. your control. There's nothing you could have done to okay. prevent that. So that's an interesting fact anyway. And I would imagine insurance companies kinda keep track of how often storms come through a certain area, yes. and so rates for an area are already gonna, you know, Reflect account that. for that. Yep. So, okay, exactly. that makes sense. So, uh, specifically with authority roofing, do you find that a lot of the work you do is insurance claims work, or do you do? Uh, we do a lot of homes, homes that have older roofs and tear offs multiple layers on them. Oh, okay. So we do a lot of that work too. We, yeah, we, I mean, if, I don't know if you guys did the Cherry Hill Water Park, we did a lot of their roofs for their hell damage. Oh, cool. From a couple years ago. So that's been, so, we, We'll do commercial roofs. We do, you know, if people just have a bad roof, it needs to be repaired. Sure. We love to do that work. Um, insurance works nice because if you're the homeowner and I come to you and I say, hey, in order for us to get the roof replaced, you need a roofer, right? I can help you get the roof done and you don't have to pay for it. Insurance is bringing money and it's easy for you as a homeowner to go, yeah, I'll, yeah. <laughs> let's get the work done. So it takes the financial burden out of it. Gotcha. So. Okay. So you actually mentioned something that brings up a question that I've always had. You mentioned uh, you do full tear-offs where there's been multiple layers of shingles done. Yeah. So what, is it bad for roofers to do multiple layers of shingles? And if so, why does anybody do it? 
Yeah. That's so, my question. Well, yeah. so, so here's the thing to think about is, okay, you have a layer of shingles that go on a roof. If you're talking about two and three and four layers, each of those roofs has had 20 or 30 years. So go ahead and go back in time and see when, <laughs> right, when did code say you couldn't have four layers on the roof? Well, when the, even when the third and fourth layer were putting on, you're talking about 40, 50 years ago. So it's hard to say they shouldn't have people were just doing it, right? That's oh, okay. an inexpensive way to cover your roof. Now the code has come out and said, okay, you're, you can have two layers. You can have a layer of shingles and you can do a recover. You know, you can lay over those shingles with a second layer. Oh, okay. But you're not supposed to go over two layers. And insurance companies, when there's damage, you don't do a second layer. You tear it off to make sure there's no other damage on the wood. And then you put the next layer back, you know, a new layer back on. And that's, I'd recommend to people right tear it off make sure there's no other damage sure you get your flashings right against the house yeah on your pipes you get that done right so there's not small leaking a roof can leak into your attic space and into your insulation you never even know mm. so you want to make sure that's right okay you know, gotcha done correctly so it's not so much something that's happening frequently today it's more of something that's yeah. happened in the past yes gotcha yeah. long time yeah you got to think about it like generations of roof you know yep. every 20 every 20 <laughs> to 30 years you've got yeah. a new generation and there's code differences and mm -hmm. okay that makes a lot of sense yeah. so uh was, you mentioned willard was hit by a hailstorm yeah so if you're in willard call this guy uh and then wind also came through i know it came down in the south we had some wind i don't know if it yes. was how severe yeah. it was do yeah. you know which areas were affected so by? i've had calls on homes that are in syracuse and layton that okay. had wind all the way up through ogden the every time we have a change in you know we're going into summer and then from summer we're going into fall utah has harsh winds you know hell and so it's crazy that you'll get spots where maybe there's you know, just a few houses that, that you've had a high wind come through and just ripped off shingles and the neighbor's house is fine because mm. of the way it is in the wind, because of the way it is in the storm. I've had in the hell storm, I've had them say there's not hell damage on a house that's in the middle of the storm where all the houses are being replaced around it. So weather's, yeah, it'd be really weird. That's why it's good to have someone look at it, make sure. So if they wanna have you come take a look at the roof, what is the best way to get in touch with you? So the best is just to call us. Uh, my number, it, I guess probably on the screen, it's 801-628-2112. Um, authority right Roof, <laughs> authorityroof.com, you can go to that, you can send us an email if you want. Best is to call us, schedule an appointment, come out and take a look at it. Perfect, all right, so, well that is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for being here. You bet. And definitely reach out to Michelle and Bowen if you have need or questions about their services. This has been another successful episode of Venture Utah, accident free since 2003. All right, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you very much.